Hey, this is Liz with Northern Bell Farms. Um, I'm just going to do a bunch of clips today. Um, I'm going to do a tomato pruning video as well. Um, my mom said something about showing Janice. She was my favorite of my first block. Um, but right now, <clears throat> I just seen Duke was out. So I'm going to show Duke. He's my favorite of the second block. Not Duke. Oh, don't be scared, Duke, man. You can come back. He's my favorite. He's sweet. He's kind. Gentle. We have a couple little bantam roosters that always chase my kids around and try to kick them. But then this guy, he's huge. And he's always so sweet and nice. And he would never hurt anyone. And he protects his flock. He's sweet. We love roosters. This is what happens when it gets a lot of rain or if you water your tomatoes too much, your tomatoes will start to split. So they went from being beautiful like this, nice and plump and round and shiny and colored to these ones are probably the closest to ripe. It actually looks like this one on the top is starting to blush, but they're splitting because it's rained almost every day and we get probably four or five inches a week. And tomatoes like it drier. They like probably around an inch, maybe two inches a week. And that's about it. So if you water deeply two or three times a week, you're usually good. Or if you have rain, you should just hold off and not water your tomatoes. Just wait for the rain and see how much that will let out. But here is our overflow of tomatoes on the side here. And I'm going to be doing a pruning video later on in the back. These ones I'm not going to prune. I did prune the bottom part just because they're so closely planted together. Um, and I do have to weed in here, but you know, when I stop weeding somewhere, I have to start somewhere else. So, but... This will be my experiment with how long these will last before they get disease or whatever. Uh, since they're my overflow, it looks like this one has caterpillars, so maybe I'll spray it with some neem oil later. Must just be this one variety because the leaves next to it are fine on the other uh, blueberries and cream, I think these are. But then that's eaten through so I will do a pruning video later in the back as we tie up the rest of the tomatoes hey y'all it's Liz from Northern Bell Farms um, I am going to do a tomato pruning video today on request by Tanya from Swallowtail Pines um, this is something very controversial and everybody has a say in it on how they do it or not and every year i do the same thing i prune some i leave some i fertilize some i leave some all of my tomatoes are always dip different and i just take care of them as individually needs like i don't treat all of my tomatoes the same because they don't ever look the same. I'll show you around and show you what I mean, but um, I prune as necessary. Usually I prune the bottom foot and a half because I plant them really close. I plant them, here's one stem, and then at my elbow is another stem. So a foot and a half, maybe. Um, so the bottom foot and a half to two feet is usually pruned. I clip those off. A lot of people say to wash your clippers in like soapy water and wipe it off so if there is disease you don't transfer it. I'm in the south and it gets really hot really fast. I even brought this with me to show you. It is 84 degrees with 75 percent humidity and it's 10 o'clock in the morning. You can even see the sweat starting to form on my face. It's wet. The air is wet. It's hot and wet. And tomatoes don't like that. Tomatoes don't like to stay wet on their foliage. And I'm sure that out here they feel it all the time. 
because over here they're by where my uh, gray water drains into like a French drain back here. So that makes it even more wet back here. But um, these leaves are turning yellow. So these right here on this row will get trimmed. Oh, I also found my first yellow monster bell. See, it's starting to turn yellow. So I clipped it. Can't wait till those start pumping them out. But, so we get sharp clippers. This is my problem is sometimes I can't find a pair of sharp clippers, but. And then, you just cut the bottom branches. See how these ones are all yellow and crispy? So we're just, they're no good to the plant at that point. They use them for, you know, photosynthesizing. The plant needs to keep them alive if they're attached. So if by cutting them off, we give the plant less work to do at trying to fix damaged foliage. Hang on. What, baby? I'm in the back garden, baby. Tomato. Split from the rain. I'm eating it. Okay, I'm making a video and I'll get you some berries after. Okay, deal. So, cut up all the leaf foliage that doesn't look like it's doing very well. Because we don't want the plant to struggle trying to keep it alive. It's dead, it's not doing any good. Take it off. Now the plant won't have to work so hard at trying to keep that dead part alive. And it'll have more energy to put towards new growth and new fruit. Uh, I use fencing to hold up my tomatoes because I find it easier to weave the tomato in between all of the fencing. Um, just because uh, I grow 200 to 300 tomatoes. That's your phone? Well, actually, it's my temperature gauge, which tells me the humidity, too. Yeah, I can check it. Do you know what humidity is? Yeah. Some moisture in the air. Yeah. I can check up there. Yeah, there's a lot here. I can check up there in the water. That actually goes on the porch. I walked by it this morning when I was bringing the eggs in. Yeah, and you're silly. You're silly. Also, if you plant your tomatoes close like this, you yeah. should prune the suckers. I'm not seeing very many on this one. Yeah. Um, the suckers are... Yeah. 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 You should do it. it says peas. Ugh. So sweaty. So gross. Okay. Your suckers are the growth in the armpit of the tomato. Like right here. Uh, this is a sucker. You can, um, sorry, that's how I prune a lot of times is with my fingernails. Um, you can take suckers off. It's better if they're a little bit bigger than this. But you can stick them in a cup of water until they grow roots. And then you can have a whole other tomato plant if it's like late in the season and you don't have time to start more. Um, also, if you accidentally top one, you can do that. You can put it in a cup of water and have a whole other tomato plant. Oh, sorry, baby. Um... But we're just going to prune up all of these tomatoes real quick. But like I said, it's controversial with pruning. Everybody has their own way, their own method, how far up they do. Um, a lot of times in market gardening, you can prune all the way up to where your fruit is at. Like, if you wanted to, and this one looks like we might almost have to. Um, this one has the yellowing burnt leaves on the bottom so we're going to prune all those off all the way up to where this fruit is but usually you can keep doing that after I would this fruit ripens and I pick it we could keep pruning all the leaves off all the way up to wherever the next fruit is so if the next fruit is all the way up here we can prune all these leaves off so it's just one stem feeding the fruit and the top leaves to keep the plant alive for growth 
I don't usually do that. Like I said, if it looks bad, I cut it off. If not, I leave it. I have a lot of work, a lot of other stuff to do, and pruning two to three hundred tomatoes. Gardening is pretty much a by myself thing. Um, it's what makes me happy, so it's my thing. Um, so finding time to do all of this stuff, like weeding and all that. Don't pick, yes, you can pet them. Please don't pick them, honey. We got a couple, oh, like another week or two and they'll be right. You pet the big giant one? Oh yeah, they look good, don't they? I like that one. I like the ribbed ones. You just wait. You have to wait till it starts to turn red. Yeah, turn red. Now I can eat it. Mm -hmm. I can turn red. Yeah. And I can turn red. And now, now I can eat it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I can do it with Freya. Uh, Freya doesn't. Well, no, Freya likes tomatoes. I was say Freya doesn't like tomatoes. She likes tomatoes. She just doesn't like any other vegetables. I like vegetables. I know. I like vegetables. Uh, no, I like the vegetables. No, you make it better. No, you make it better. Mm -hmm. They make it better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the reason I don't prune all the way up or um, keep pruning is just because we lose tomatoes early on in the season anyways. Like, probably by mid-July at the latest, or end of July. <laughs> what are you doing? We won't have any tomatoes left anyways because it'll be in the triple digits and the flowers will just drop before they can even be pollinated. So, I love you. I love you too. So we try to plant as early as we can, get them started in the greenhouse as early as we can. That way we, ha we get what we can get out of them for a month or two before they just turn to dead. Um, this is a huge mess. I have to actually go see if um, one of the boxes I got is a clip because I need to clip all of these up like this and I need to go get the bamboo stakes. Uh, actually a lot of these growths um, I could clip if I wanted to because see this is a sucker right here in the middle. That's the armpit growth. The reason you people choose to prune them is because they block the airflow which creates disease in tomatoes and because um, tomatoes like it dry and so therefore if they have clumps of stuff together it's never going to dry out um, but like I said 75% humidity here right now so drying out isn't really a thing so tomatoes never do good for me if anyone has any secrets on tomatoes in the south besides varieties I'd like to know your secret or besides pruning all the way up um, we do plan to do try um, when we move the method of tying them like having a long trellis and putting the string down and then wrapping them around the string um, we're not going to do that here because I already have this type of setup um, Hang on, I'm coming over. Oh, see? And lifting it up, I just snapped this. Um, so, if I really, like, this was the only growth on here, I'd be really concerned. And I'd take this, and I'd cut the bottom three branches. And I'd put it in a cup of water until it sent out roots. But, even if this isn't the top of the plant, I'm not very concerned. Because there's all these this sucker growth right here which could be more tomato and the whole plant looks healthy they got there's two branches on the bottom that need to be cut off but this is my goal for this afternoon uh, when my husband gets home so he can watch the kids um, but my goal is to get all of these pruned and tied up before um, before I lose them all to some kind of rot or disease. Because um, we haven't even got our first harvest. They're just now starting to ripen and should be ripe within the next two weeks. So um, I'll keep you posted and maybe share pictures on my Northern Bell Farms Facebook page after. Um, but it's getting too hot so I'm going to go inside and do an unboxing video. 
and uh, if you have any questions about uh, tomato pruning or if you want to tell me the way you do it uh, leave it in the comments below uh, like and subscribe for more garden tips throughout the season on what we're growing maybe you'll find something you might want to grow too and we'll see you on the next one don't conform be transformed One more thing, uh, I'm going to throw this in the middle of the video, but um, I said I'd show you the different, uh, the way I treat the different tomatoes differently because they all look different. Oh, that won't stay there, I'll put this stuff down. Um, okay, this side of the tomato patch is the new, um, this half is just tilled. I till because I don't have enough compost and can't afford enough compost or mulch to do a no-till. I would love to do no-till. I'm starting the beginning of it by laying down cardboard out front in the walkways to take down the amount um, of compost and mulch that I need. Uh, so we're moving towards that. But tilling has worked for us. Um, and I'll probably keep doing it as long as it's working. Well, it's not the best method, but we'll have some that's probably no-till and then some we need to keep traditional. So here's the part we tilled this year and all the tomatoes are looking, the plants are looking big and lush and green. And they don't have, these ones I had already pruned on the bottom. This is last year's actually on this half. But from here out that way, all there is new. I think that's where the sun stops in the afternoon. So I think back here gets less sun, um, except for maybe right here along this part of the fence might get a little bit more sun than the rest because all those are too small. But I'm taking notes on this new section for this year because that's what you have to do. If you're not quite sure, try it out anyways. And if it doesn't work, then you'll know for next year. And you'll know how to handle it and what you can put there. Um, but this is last year's side. And the tomatoes are not looking so hot. They are small. They are not producing. Their leaves are yellowing. Um, back there isn't doing anything at all. My... I can't grow anything back there. If anybody has any idea, I've tried beans, tomatoes, uh, there's some peppers back there right now. Um, I think it's pretty shaded throughout most of the day is the problem. Uh, and then here's from last year, but these ones look okay. All of these tomatoes, these peppers are new. Then there is one tomato here that's doing okay. See? One. Puny. Puny. All of these. Puny and yellow. Um, those ones aren't even, we're not even going to talk about these ones over here. I put down some uh, rabbit bedding um, to push them forward, but they're looking even worse. So I think I'm going to dig those up and throw them all out, both rows, all the way back to this corner, which got uh, the rabbit fertilizer a couple weeks ago, like two weeks ago, and is looking much better now. Still yellow, still needs some trimming, but it's at least it's looking better. But it's not even close to the other side that's lush and full and big and I think that last year it just got drained of nutrients and depleted completely that this year it really needed a break or a, like super amendment which I just had a little bit of compost that I put in and it probably wasn't enough so next year we'll probably not be doing tomatoes because they don't do so well anyway so i'm not going to put my effort into them i'll probably stick to peppers because they do much much better they're so much easier they grow fast big long a lot of our peppers are from last year that we still have so i think we're just going to stick with peppers and one more thing before i shut it off on my middle clip here 
Look at this dahlia. Isn't that pretty? Okay. And this is Janice. Janice is my favorite from my first flock. It will keep her forever and always. She's sweet and kind. She lays blue eggs. And she likes to talk and she lets me hold her and pet her. I love Janice. I know Janice. You want to get down? There you go. See you later, Janice. Say bye, Janice. Love ya.